first of all, I want to thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for asking me. Well, it's the funniest thing because um, it was, uh, what was it, Saturday or Sunday? It was on the weekend and I was in meditation and, um, you know, I was talking with the Akashic librarians and some other, you know, divine know-it-all beings. I don't mean that me like they know it all <laughs> and, and i was like so what's next what's coming up you know <laughs> drop a little insight into me and the visions they showed were like so hardcore so overwhelming and i was like holy crap this is terrible this is so bad and they're like oh but on the other side of it it gets much better i'm like yeah but in the now oh and um and they said call dahlia they told me to call you so i called you and i was like i've just had the worst vision and he said i know me too like they always whenever they tell me to call someone with this it's uh so um that's when you and I agreed to do this, but I think a week ago when we had the visions, everything that seems so extreme is now already beginning to become, you know, our daily lives. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, there's a part of me that felt like we should have done this a week ago when we were both like <laughs> freaking out. But there's a part of me that thinks it's better now because people are like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, and, and, you know, as a, as a seer, um, I think you can, you can share this experience with me too. Like we're, it's not always about the, it's not always about the foresight. It's not always, you know, um, something is happening and I need to tell the world. It's like, okay, wait a minute. You know, I need to wait till the timing is right. Right. So this is, um, this is, it's, I think it's divine timing, right? Like well, it was perfect when you called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, here's the thing, like you guys who are watching, you got to understand, I never thought of myself as a seer. In fact, it was Uma when she and I had visions of all the COVID-19 stuff in February. It's the first time she dropped that thought in my mind. I'm like, oh yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I was like, no, I'm not a seer. I'm like, well, I have future sight. And she's like, well, what do you think a seer is? I'm like, oh, okay. I kind <laughs> of, but I think even a few months ago, there weren't that many people who were tapping into their seer skills. Mm -hmm. They were either dormant seers or they were not acknowledging or they didn't, but now it seems like they're popping up everywhere, which is very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, I've always known that you had tremendous foresight. Oh. And you are an amazing channel. It was wonderful to call you and have you so comfortable with the fact that you are, you know, future vision, you're here as well. Yeah, it, uh, that was, that's a long time coming. <laughs> it definitely wasn't like right off the bat, but, um, you know, part of our journey is to step into that, right? And, and once you do one, you realize that, you know, it's, it's not about being better than anybody or anything else like that. It, it is just, it is just a way of being. It's the same thing as putting your pants on, you know, it, it's, it is what it is, right? Yeah. Well, I think it's in with, and I mentioned, and I'm mentioning this because it's really important, everyone watching, if you are finding yourself getting visions or thoughts about like what's happening and receiving information, you know, go with it, open it. It feels very natural. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of people who are suddenly referring themselves, it's like, wow, I see the future. When did that happen? It feels like I've always had that, but I never did it before, but now it yeah. feels like I've always had it. And I, I think. And know. so I'm so glad you said that because, um, as people are opening up to these future visions, 
there's there is the innate human desire to label right good bad all these different things and mm -hmm. and then i think that with the opening up that people are experiencing it is that um one they're ready right like it's 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 the, the time that it is less likely that they will dismiss what they're seeing. And then um, this is the next opportunity for growth, right? Like I know when I first started getting visions, I was like, oh, you know, that looks, that looks really bad, you know? And then, and then in my mind and in my heart, I'm like, okay, how do I prevent it? You know? And uh, I was having this conversation the other day, there are um energy needs to play itself out that's what karma is karma is neither good nor bad it just needs to finish right we both know that and there are three different kinds of karma like people talk about it so generally like oh you know you did this thing karma's gonna come get you it's not that <laughs> and there is one of those three karmas that you cannot avoid no matter the circumstance but with all three, you can minimize or, you know, like I said, the other two, you can work through and heal. So what a great opportunity for people to be opening up. And like, even if what you see is uncomfortable, like moving into that space and just being like, okay, you know, if I can't, if I can't avoid the tree in the road, do I stop? Do I ask for help? Do I tell somebody so that they can remove it? Do I drive around it? You know, like there's there's tools, right? And oh yeah, and that's what the seership is all about. It's like, okay, well, where's my place in all of this? So exactly, exactly. Some years ago, I was lucky enough to spend time working with uh, some of the Tibetan monks, the Dalai Lama's group, mm. and uh, wow. I mean, they're, they're like, awesome. They are the best. Right. And, and we talked about karma because since I've always worked in the Akashic library, um, I have a perspective on life paths and journeys. And I had at that point, minimal exposure to Buddhism. I mean, probably more than most, but certainly much less than I have now, but I, um, in all of the teachings of Buddhism I had, which were rudimentary, it was a, if you're not good in the next life, you're gonna be smitten down. You know, mm. like if you have wealth and posterity, you better help out those that are less fortunate than you, or in your next life, you're gonna be less fortunate. So if you want a better life, you gotta help. And which always seemed to me very self-serving. So I was talking with him about that, about how everyone has free will. You know, we're not uh, indebted to our karma. And what's all this about? Like, you could do the most horrendous things, but if even in the last moment of life, you have an epiphany and you like realize what you've done and you become emotionally neutral, then you're done. They're like, yeah, that's true. You know, because it's about soul's growth. It's not about life experience. But um, I was surprised in my conversations with them that we actually were in total agreement on everything. There were slightly different words or descriptions, but really like the truth is the truth. And the truth right. is that things are happening, but we have the ability to manifest through them. And that's a great deal of what I see karma as you are in a situation how do you find your way through it and to a place of love and joy and total you know health right and and as things are happening that's that's the proofing ground right like mm -hmm. um and it takes i mean we've all seen the memes right like it takes pressure to form a diamond remember that you're a diamond you know i don't want to be cliche but you know it, it it takes certain catalysts and events to activate certain aspects of our genetic makeup for us to fully express in who we are. And we only know but so much of what is actually in that genetic structure in our DNA. We only use a fraction of our brain, but now we're getting this tornado and roller coaster and you know all these events that are happening in the world. And 
and we're getting a chance to express in those divine ways. And so for the people who are seeing now and they're like, oh my God, I've never seen before or felt. And, you know, I said something the other day and then it happened. Did I manifest that? Did I predict it? And it's like, well, we can, we can dance around the language all we want, but what are you embodying? What are you, um, what are you stepping into? And how do you want the world to see that? Um, how do you want to use it to help others? is Mm -hmm. is also kind of what's coming forward too which is really exciting yes so you guys who are watching if you're like man we tuned in to hear visions about the future and all they're talking about is karma understand (laughs) we said all that because we're about to say some things that will make you a little uncomfortable but understand we're talking about a karmic circle here uh uh here's the situation and we are going into that situation that tree has fallen down across the road and we're driving right at it (laughs) (laughs) thank you dahlia (laughs) so what are we going to do and how will we get to continue our journey on the other side of that tree um and we've both got some like I'll tell you, last February, when the visions first hit me, um, and I won't go all into detail because it's all on YouTube, but um, when I woke up in the morning and I was doing my meditation and I saw the events that I'd seen down the road were completely surrounding me, I was like, oh, we're here now? That's a little early, but we are (laughs) here and um what i said in february by the end of 2020 i'm still seeing one quarter of the world's population will not be with us that's what i'm seeing and it's not just from covid19 it's from global climate change from revolutions from you know poor people being left to starve in the streets from the top 1% hoarding 95% of, you know, everything, all the resources, everything we need for every single person and animal to thrive on our planet, we have. We just need to get out of the Hunger Games attitude and into the, what would we do if we were in the Garden of Eden attitude? And we wanted to keep it the Garden of Eden and stay there. So, um, so that's the precursor to what I'm going to share, um, Dahlia. And and then piggybacking on that, um, as far as the visions that I've seen, um, it's, it's been these fluctuations, right? So your, your, the vision that you saw is, is sort of the reality and it, it seems like on a, not quite daily, but daily to weekly basis, our, our, our morphogenic field um, changes. It, it is through the decisions that we make in, uh, you know, are we coming together? Are we separating more? These sort of things. So I've seen fluctuations in what you're saying. And like one week, it'll be like, oh, we're, you know, we're on the uphill swing. And then the next week, it'll be like, oh, we're, you know, we're sliding backwards. And Um, fluctuating in and out of this sort of heart-centered space. We're moving from, you know, it used to be, oh, well, I want a community of like minds. And we're we're trying to move towards like hearts. And um, so the, some of the visions that I've gotten are about that space. You know, um, the, the how much can I care about other people? And then as these individuals make those decisions, we kind of you know come together in the broader scope um and sort of heal our wounds Mm -hmm. and and move forward as a group um but right now um you know the trajectory is not it's not looking great like you mentioned um you know i in in the swing of of this week's decision making process for for humanity we are not um we're not on the uphill swing we're not on the upswing so um it's unfortunate and um certainly not 
Well, I guess I, I want to say certainly not cause for worry, but like if you find yourself worried, that's the time to ask like, okay, but what am, what am I worried about? Am I worried about losing my life? Am I worried about losing my friends? You know, what is that loss? That, or am I, am I worried about this, this concept of, of false security that I've been holding on to for decades? Mm -hmm. Am I worried about that? And that's where the shifts take place. That's where that's where we really um, get to that uphill swing. It's like, oh, you know, I I don't have to take what others are giving me. I I can I can create from this space mm -hmm. rather than from fear and lack. Right, and that's the thing. I mean, we've all been through tough times in our lives, and we've known the only way to get through it is to get through it and say, I know there's good times ahead what does it take for me to get from here to good times? Right. So when I talked with the librarians, Dahlia, you were there a couple of years ago um, when I channeled them and um, and they got a lot of people oh, in the room. People got mad at you. Yeah, people got mad. <laughs> but like I said, when you are giving visions of the future, people get mad at you and then later when you tell them so you know when i had those visions you didn't want to hear and they came true no one wants to hear someone go i told you so like everyone watching understand we're not doing this for us because you guys are gonna get mad at us and then later you're gonna get cranky when we tell you oh yeah all that stuff i saw came true like i saw <laughs> uma just popped up hi uma. Oh, hey, uma uma is the first person i did this uh haphazard series with um, <laughs> because again i came out of meditation and i was like whoa i don't know what to do with this i said call uma so i called uma and she said you're pulling me out of a meditation where i had visions of the future it's freaking me out <laughs> and so like i said every time every time it's this is like wild um, but I saw, she said at the end of May, she saw borders opening up, people traveling again, uh, everything opening, businesses opening, people getting back to life as usual. And I said, that's strange because I see like riots, I see protests, I see protests rioting, I see so much death and everything just shut way down. And we're like, we don't understand, but we both share what we see. And we were both right. Yeah, we were both right. At the end of May, everyone opened up all that. But at the end of May, we had peace marches, we had riots, protests, and the numbers started going back up. So, and continue yeah. to go. Continue so you guys watching, go. there's no one answer. And I've seen like, they're showing me so many possible futures right now. There's so much agitation going right now that I'm seeing like, um, the number one thing, the number one thing they're showing, which is an extension of that first time you were there when I was channeling them. And I'm telling you guys, I don't have this on my YouTube because like people in the room were pissed at me. It was a whole lot of very spiritual divine people. And one of them wanted to punch me in the face. He was so mad with the librarians telling them about our accountability for the future. Um, and so they were saying the women's march was a time when um you know there were sister marches all over the world and people mm -hmm. were throwing like events in their homes and all of that and they were saying this is the time when humanity oh. can come together as a collective from this you can grow from this because that was like the biggest march literally in the history of our planet actually and it was like it created a mandala around our planet a grid of everyone saying see me see me as a person right now um nothing happened it fizzled out and the librarians were like wah, wah, wah. <laughs> they were not they were like oh well <laughs> guess that was too much to hope for right, so now right. with the black lives movement they're saying people have to understand the black lives movement is a spiritual movement as well as a physical movement <clears throat> that Absolutely. all the spiritual people who say oh i'm spiritual this has nothing to do with me boy librarians do not like to hear that 
<laughs> they're saying this is our chance again to come together as a collective where humanity cares about humanity. And you Absolutely. see where the movement has grown has been in its heart based through love, through caring, through truth. They're like love, caring, and truth. You need those three elements to become a collective. Well, and, and, and you know, to your point of, of the, the, the divergence, right? The, you know, I'm spiritual, not my problem. Um, one of the things that I was shown was like, you know, you, if you, if you as a fully, like, if you look at humanity, like a body, you know, the, if, if the, the foot gets hurt and the hand goes, no, nope, not my problem. I'm going to keep moving forward. Like you're not going anywhere. <laughs> like we are not going anywhere until the, 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 all of us can can shift into that together and you know i remember the beginnings of of this year everybody's like oh 2020 vision you know i can see clearly and that was another thing another topic in in my channelings and meditations i was like what happened guys and they're like well you asked for clear 2020 vision and now you see all of it and, and it, <laughs> it's not pretty it's not fun to look at but guess what here is the mop here is the broom and do what you want with it <laughs> so i was like well, okay well damn <laughs> yeah. so um and and to your point of the mandala too i i was um working last night in meditation and decided to to go into the into the core of the earth and I was just gonna sit there you know hey guys help me heal what do we need to know yada 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 and I was invited to Telos um under Mount Shasta now I I haven't gotten that invitation before so I was like oh snap you know um I get to go to where the Lemurians are sort of working under wraps right and so um, I'm there and I'm, I'm seeing this beautiful city and everybody's mo like really working really quickly. And the grid lines that you spoke of, they're, they are like this bright blue color because there is information and energy traveling very quickly through them and they're hitting different spots of the world. And it is just like as we're shifting on the upper layer on the surface, there's work being done underneath and they were like, you know, we are essentially funneling energy to support different things that are happening on this planet from an evolutionary space, um, an evolution of consciousness. And we're doing what we can, but like, it's almost like there keeps um, being clogs in the pipe. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, they told me that everything that we do so we're moving from the information age into the action age like it can't just be think happy thoughts you know click your heels twice and you'll be fine it it is everybody has to take action and it cannot be this avoidance of or or you know in the woo-woo community it's like oh well that's low vibe i don't and it's like <laughs> well okay that's that's nice and that's somewhat avoidant so how much can you really offer? How much can you really help if you are not willing to address, like I mentioned of the, the, our, our body, our, mm -hmm. our collective human body, if you're not willing to look at your bad knee that isn't functioning properly, how far can you go? Even if you're, even if you're a star seed like me or like you, Benita, um, uh, you're you're in this earthly incarnation you can't skip you can't I mean unless unless you decide like okay my time's up and and if and that's not a joke you know there are some people who are making that decision and I grieve and long for their physical passing and do my best to find empathy for their pain mm -hmm. but for those of us who are still here you can't bypass this. You can't. Right. 
you know, it's like you were saying, grabbing the mop and the broom because you got the 2020 site. It's when you are like a group of people cleaning a house and you've got like half the people mopping, scrubbing, cleaning, and the other half are like, oh, I'm dusting the books. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. what, that's what it's like. And, um, and I'm getting calls like daily from people daily if you guys if i don't answer my phone a lot you know i will get back to you but um i'm getting calls daily from people saying they don't understand someone they've always thought of as a spiritual teacher a mentor you know a healer is now saying things like um they refuse to wear masks and if your vibration is high enough you don't need to wear a mask and promoting become one with vibration so you don't have to wear a mask. I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You know, then why do you say become one with vibration so you don't have to wear clothing when you're walking down the street? Just put on the freak. <laughs> no, that's thing. shape-shifting, Benita. You don't need clothes <laughs> for shape-shifting. <laughs> yeah. Yes, when you're high-five enough to shape-shift into an animal that doesn't catch COVID-19. <laughs> then go for it, go for it. But no, I mean, stay safe. Use your common sense. The librarians keep saying, you know, pure heart, love, caring, common sense, common sense. You yeah. got to use your common sense. But if people are um, giving you advice that you feel like that's not good advice, just, you know, we, we all have our karmic lessons we got to learn in life. And um, I think, Dahlia, you and I had the conversation. There's a lot of us who've had this conversation where a few years ago, my guides came to me and they're like, you got to resolve all your karma. And mm -hmm. I spent five years basically resolving not just all my karma of this life. Yeah, it's still a little work in progress, but the big stuff is dealt with. Right. But all of my past lives, I'm considered karmic free. And for now that doesn't mean for all future for now <laughs> clearing and creating clearing and creating <laughs> exactly <laughs> i got a free ride <laughs> but the thing is as you know i've been doing a lot of traveling being with very divine people and i'll go and i'll meet someone for the first time they'll look at me and they say oh you know you are clean of karma so are you choosing to stay on the planet or are you ready to leave I'm like, no, no, I'm going to stick around. <laughs> I don't know let all that work just take off. <laughs> I but, think it's hard. I think it's hard, you know, definitely. Yeah. But the thing is, there's people who have not cleared their karma. Mm -hmm. And if you got the weight of your karma hanging on you, there's only so high you can manifest before you hit a glass ceiling of your own making. So if you have someone you've considered divine and suddenly you're like, this doesn't sound very good to me just love them and honor them but you know only expect of them what they can give i think it's hard to give like a mass prescription right like right, if right. that was the case medications would work we would all be the same look the same do the same things it wouldn't it would be it would be that easy right and i what i have seen um unfortunately like you is just this this division like this all or nothing stance on on different things and um that's where the breakdowns in the in the friendships and communities are and and the, the message that keeps coming through in all the channelings that i'm having and um and experiencing is that that heart centered connection like when you're connected at the heart you can have a disagreement like i don't i don't honestly believe that you and i believe verbatim the same things mentally yeah. right but right. our heart is in the same place you know our heart is to see humanity grow and thrive and and so that heart centered connection and then i'm seeing like like if if what you're absorbing has like 
levels to like and when I say absorbing like the things that you're watching the things that you're encountering with people if it is like oh well you need to reach this level to do this thing like how is that different from religion like for all the woo woo people out there that walked away from various religious factions and groups how are we not replicating that by telling people that they need to attain a certain level you know if you look at like deeply at Buddhist teachings and and other things, they have pillars and pathways, but they're not levels. And at no point are you frowned upon for being at the beginning of the path or the end. No. And and the recognition of all those paths being different. And so I don't know. I I'm I'm gonna step off my box because I said like because it's it's really frustrating to watch that. You know, I I I I I believe I am not I'm not anti-church. I think it's appropriate for some to stay on their path or to feel guided. That's fine. For me, I want to be in the church of I walked outside, that tree spoke to me, and that was. I just had an interaction with the divine. But I don't want to be told that like, well, your vibration's here. By next Tuesday, you need to be here. And then, you know, at that point, then you'll really be, you know, be in this place. Or I don't want to be told you need to attune to this so that you can reach that bullshit. I, I'm sorry, I'm probably not supposed to cuss on this, but... <laughs> I, I, a lot on these things. <laughs> really, really, it is just asking, you know, I honor every walk, every path, the class you want to take to get structure and information. Everybody's always like, you know, oh, uh, you know, should I take the Reiki class? Yes, by all means. But if you don't take Reiki, I guarantee you in five years, you'll be in the exact same place doing the exact same thing. And what Reiki offers you is structure. It offers you vocabulary but do what you do and that's what this is all like we are getting um this concentrated dose of 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 what it takes to fully realize all of humanity not just the good or not just the bad well that's the thing the um some years ago i was talking with metatron and I was having a little bit of a tantrum. And I said to him, Metatron, can you please do me a favor and just kill everyone who's, you know, <laughs> below a certain frequency? Just what? kill them all, kill them all. Because you want us to heal the planet, just kill all the ones who are like the planetary energy bummers. And he laughed and he said, so you're asking me to commit mass genocide at your request? I'm like, yes, please. And he said, and so you, as the originator of mass genocide, where do you feel your energy will be? You know, trying to, and I was like, no, no, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. So I feel karmically clean. And he's like, no, you know, and he knew I did not really want this, but I was just very frustrated. And he said, your challenge is not to heal the planet with all the people you like. Your challenge is to heal the planet with everyone, to raise right. everyone's frequency. So now I feel like they were trying to do that and humanity resisted. So now we, like the librarians came down the other day and they said, every single thing happening that you are afraid of, you know, us, the big global you, has been by your creation. You don't like Trump, you created him. Imagine this exact same person, born of the same parents, but he had been born to a planet that was filled with love and harmony where democracy really was de democratic, mm -hmm. where values really were for the well-being of everyone. What would have happened to this boy? He may have still grown up to be that same guy, but he, he would have had zero authority. We're the ones who gave him the authority because we allowed, 
and again, the global we, please, every, and I don't feel like I'm pointing to you in specific, the <laughs> global we allowed for this imbalance to happen. Now, because we kept pushing it and we're going around, we're torturing bats, and, and now like they're, the Ebola is coming back again because we're torturing the marmots, which are the animals that when they're terrified, their meat, no, bubonic plague, mm -hmm. not Ebola. Ebola is back, you know, in Africa. And, um, you know, the bubonic plague is coming up when we torture these animals, which is happening in China. They hunt them, put them in cages, torture them, and then eat them they create bubonic plague and the people eat the meat get bubonic plague and pass it along mm. so how is you know like these things are all within our control we don't like pollution we're the ones who create pollution so what is happening now i feel so bad my wish to metatron is coming true because so many people are dying now it's not about oh the good people get to live and the bad people get to die it's not that at all it's messy like everything humanity does it's messy and it's haphazard. So, you know, now like we dug ourselves in and everything is so much worse, just like every life lesson until we get ourselves through it, until we say, you know what? We want to get, we've learned our lesson. We're ready to get out of it. We're ready to go forward on a healthy path. The karma will not be clear. We're going to be stuck in here and we'll keep coming back again and again. And again, just like every time in our life, we're like, God, I thought I learned this lesson or I'm trying to forgive or like, we got to learn it completely and become clear. Yeah. And from the healer's perspective, you know, um, so like in my sessions, whenever there is, um, whenever there is pain or tension, I'm, as I'm explaining to the person, you know, pain that you may have experienced in your life. Um, may have been a resistance, like you were saying, like that, that is consistent and clear in the, from the healer's perspective, pain is a block, it is a resistance to something. Um, and, 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 you know, it is a lot more complicated than I'm saying, but, you know, now we're experiencing pain on a global level. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting an opportunity to clear that and in that clarity, um, pain subsides. And that's why there is such an oscillation and a vacillation in, in how we feel week to week, day to day. Um, uh, I saw, I saw a meme that was called, uh, the Corona coaster on somebody's <laughs> wall. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Because what's being fleshed out is our personal pain on a global scale. And, and some of us not, I mean, some have been alive since the civil rights movement yeah, some of yeah. us this is our first rodeo you know and 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 having to um to to move through that and and experience it but to not put on the lens of uh of human should and shouldn't right so like we were talking about in the beginning there are some things that have to happen and um but we tend to put on our glasses and say like, oh, well, you know, the bad people should find themselves removed and the good people. And this is why you're not seeing, because that's not a full picture, this is why you're not seeing um, large amounts of maybe quote unquote bad people right. being affected, right? Like said, karma doesn't know good or bad. It only right. there, lessons, there is no favoritism. Lessons complete. Right, and it's it's there is there is not this sort of mass choosing that's happening because it is not from the perspective of what humanity has defined as good or bad. We essentially have had we've crashed the car, and the keys are in our are, are not in our hands anymore. Right, and right. and so now you know we are sitting through this experience of. Uh, mechanics coming in and and working um, mm -hmm. and those some of those mechanics are us some of them are uh, interdimensional beings some of them are um, earth itself 
Um, I mean, look how much it thrived when we were indoors. Right. So it's just, yeah. there's so many things going on at once. <laughs> yeah. When I'm looking at the future, I'm seeing so many paths and it's like one of the paths I'm seeing is you, the United States crumbles, becomes like it falls apart. And like, Chris, a lot of people are saying, oh no, what if Trump wins again? You know, and first of all, Trump didn't win the first time. So secondly, it's possible. One of the futures I see is him winning the election. But the thing is, everyone knows if he ends up like going, oh, look, I won, that it would have been illegal. And the last time people stood by in shock and amazement as he illegally took the election. This time, there will be the rioting in the streets that our country will explode. This is one of the possibilities. If he is allowed to claim the presidency for another four years, See, by 2022, the United States will be, you know, in shambles mm -hmm. because they're, and possibly even already broken up into five or eight smaller countries. So, you know, the ones that want to fly the Confederate flag will find their own little cluster and the ones that want this, the ones that want that, you know, I, I see our country literally falling apart. Yeah. Uh, more likely, Biden will win by a landfall, but will he go ahead? They're saying he'll either go ahead as, now I got to say me, I'm not a Biden fan, but um, the, the librarians are saying he has the potential to go down in history as written as the greatest president the United States ever had because he'll be the one to pull everything together and make it thrive. Mm. However, even the librarians are getting nervous. They're like, so far, his entire campaign is platform is I'm not Trump. Like we need to see like, and oh, we don't want to defund the police. Like all he has to do is explain to people what does defunding the police mean? It does not mean you disband the police. Mm -hmm. It means you look their finances and say, this insane amount of money towards munitions is going to be moved to welfare program. You know, or mental health. Yeah, exactly. Defunding the police is not a bad thing. It's actually a really good thing. But no one in the political platform is speaking up about it, saying, let us tell you what this is. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, we're not going to defund the police. So already he's showing that he's the same guy who stood with big banks instead of people with uh, credit card stuff. He's the same guy who was the worst against Anita Hill. Like, come on, he's got to get it together. If he doesn't get it together, he'll go down in history as the forgotten president, the guy who was after the worst president, who then the whole country fell apart. It's, we're in such a, a fluctuation of choice, right? Because there was earlier in the year, there was this, this unity behind potential um, with this election. And now, um, I don't know if you felt it over the last two weeks, there is a sort of disillusionment and, and uh, scatter. Yeah. Um, and, and and it's still it's still playing out like today, and and I think it will go into next week. Um, as far as I don't, what I'm seeing is um, this this sort of um, big shift in August, like there like a cataclysm. So we don't we haven't even gotten to the election at that point, but there is like a huge. Um, I, all I can the only thing I can describe in my mind is just um it's it's almost like like an explosion mm -hmm. um and i don't really know what to do or what to make of that and i don't i don't think that is something that this is this is part of the seership right there's not always something to do it's right. it's sort of watching the train looking down the tracks and saying oh we're probably about to derail 
Mm -hmm. um, but there's not enough time to stop. So then you start to contemplate. So this is where um, my, I guess my healer's perspective comes in where it's like, okay, well, if I can't stop the train, if it's going to be real, what can I do on a personal level? You know, what is it that I need to move into? Um, it's interesting because we keep having these junctures, these concentrated opportunities, like when the, um, Oh, what was it when the all those furloughs happened? Was that last year or the year before? Um, when when, when they uh, shut down the government? Yes. Yeah. Um, the the energy of that was you are in a place where you have found out that the security you thought you had is not real, mm -hmm. and now is the time to walk away because it's safe to walk away and to pour into yourself and do what you really came here to do. And, and people waited it out. And I can't help but wonder if there was more of a shift. And this is not to say, I mean, I, this is in no way judgment of what happened back then, because I know a lot of people were making decisions that were right for their families, but they, they stayed, they waited it out. And I can't help but wonder what the jump would be if like now, if, if they, if there was like this mass walkout, you know, saying like my life and my livelihood is not disposable for you and your political gains, um, where would we be now? Um, would we be in such a economic downfall, free fall, I should say, not, I mean, yeah, so, yeah. you know. I, I think that, I think that time is coming like you say, you see a big explosion, you know, um, with Trump and lovely Betsy DeVoe going, schools will open in the fall no matter what, or we'll defund you. The teachers union is one of the most powerful national union. Like this is powerful. And the head of the teachers union said, if it's not safe for teachers to go off, we can have a national strike, wow. you know, yeah. So, you know, I don't know what kind of explosion you saw, hopefully not a physical explosion, but we never know. Yeah. But, you know, we have a lunatic, like just, you guys go ahead and watch the movie, The Madness of King George. Research about King George, Louis the 16th, um, any of these like crazy, watch uh, Werner Herzog's Aguirre, The Wrath of God. See what happens when a megalomaniac spoiled man baby loses his grip on reality because we, we're seeing it playing off. You know, I've been seeing for some time, like the fall of France, the French Revolution, it's happening here. It's happening now. Mm -hmm. So we have a man baby who is insisting that things happen the way he wants just because he says so but now more and more he's saying it against people who have power to stand up against you know he's not just saying it to impoverished immigrants who are just trying to not be murdered in their own home trying to find a way to safety they did not have a strong enough voice to speak out. And when the rest of us tried, you know, it was not as successful as we would have liked, certainly more successful than if we'd stayed silent. But now he's talking against the teachers union. He's talking against like the farm workers, the factory workers. He's talking against government employees. I think that walkout you were talking about, maybe you were just seeing it a little too early is there's like i said when you can see when you can see that the the railing um on the tracks is coming mm -hmm. like it's it's messed up and we might derail um it seems to me that um you know we had we had this avoidant kind of culture um we've we've been raised in an avoidant culture and now we can't avoid and so we're giving we're getting an opportunity to strengthen that right so it's mm -hmm. not um i found myself watching you know more news than normal 
and and be getting that sort of encouragement from my guides to say like okay feel what you're feeling feel the overwhelm follow it where does it go where is it coming from so that you know come august come what may um i'm we're ready you know it's mm -hmm. not we were we were in the spiritual gym doing the work and so you know, hopefully throughout our discussion, you know, if anybody finds themselves in disagreement or fear that you follow that. It's not to say that your your feelings are wrong, but what are they what are they telling you? And and how can you use that as an empowerment? Right? Mm -hmm. No matter what comes, you are still in charge of your own life. And um I'm loving seeing the uptick in uh local elections and local activism as well um, because so I was watching um, uh, Governor Cuomo talk about different things and him sort of responding to Trump and 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 he's like he's not in charge of this he's not in charge of that if you want to see change you know go to your local governments and it's like it, it took something like this one for like how many people before Trump actually knew what parts of their government did right and how important cer certain aspects and elections are so now we know now we know the full scope of our control and where we don't control things and we can shift that and so it's that that is the the silver lining the layer of hope right like we might have um you know, sort of a, a dictator sort of representing us as a country, but mm -hmm. from that place, you still have, you are not helpless. You're not helpless. And so don't give over to that. Don't give over to the, to, to that learned helplessness where it's like, repeat bad news, repeat this, repeat that. It is okay. Well, again, the tree's fallen in the road. What can I do about it? Mm -hmm. And then you might realize that that tree wasn't so much of a tree, but a twig, <laughs> you know? And, and then you yeah. just kind of like, oh, steps over. <laughs> for right. so. Yeah, no, I think so. I think if everyone, like we're in for some rough stuff, we're in for it. And at this point, no one knows what, is going to happen in the immediate future like i mean no one i'm talking to knows they're like well it might be this it might be this it might be this it might be this oh yeah but, yeah <laughs> like like it's all crazy right now however they do show me future earth what they call new earth and and they're they've been very clear they're giving the same message that they've been giving me for years either humanity will come together in love and harmony and take care of each other and take care of the planet, or it will fall apart so bad that civilization as we know it will crumble and the remaining people will have to return to the earth in order to survive. Through there, reconnect with all the beauty of our planet and then come together in harmony and go forward. They said it's gonna be one of the two. The more you resist, the more it becomes number two, you know, the more like the easier you do, the more it becomes number one. But we have examples already on our planet. We have countries that are thriving right now that have little to no COVID-19. They're doing great. They're very smartly locking down their borders. You know, we're not welcome there. Like, we're looking at how can we move to New Zealand? Oh, right. But we have active examples already happening on our planet. The Black Lives Movement, again, if you say Black Lives Matter, then you're saying, I am willing to take part on the first stage of humanity evolving to our next. Like when we were in that, um, that live stream last week and Dr. Darrell made that great statement, white men have claimed the top of the only one who matters them. and the more you go away from white man the less and less you matter so that black people 
matter the least because you're the furthest from, you know, Mitch McConnell. So when we say Black Lives Matter, automatically, because white lives already claim they matter, when we say Black Lives Matter, we're saying everything in between matters. So by saying Black Lives Matter, we're saying we all matter, but we're also recognizing, yeah, we're not going to do what we did anymore. And, right. you know, um, you know, this isn't I'll, the first time we've been to this precipice, though. You know, we look if you look at the um, the various civilizations and, and things of that nature, we tend to look at them as like, oh, it was a shift in government. It was this, it was that. And it was like, no, these were cataclysmic moments. And, um, you know, it is it is that that was a shift in, in humanity. So this is what I've been told um, is this is our last chance. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to get, we're not going to get a second ticket, as yeah. it were. Um, exactly. So, you know, we definitely, we definitely need to make some real decisions and, and um, real opportunities, take those opportunities for change, um, no matter what that is. And, and you know, I know you're, you're always talking about global mandalas and different mandalas. And one of the things that I was seeing is like, um, everybody's trying to, uh, fit into different sections of of what where they think they fit rather than where they actually fit and this isn't a hierarchical system but more like a you know if you're a mechanic you're not going to go under somebody's sink and try to be a plumber kind right. of thing and um and so how that fits interwoven in terms of consciousness and how like the 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 um I'll say neurodivergent of us who don't operate in, you know, normally in society, they're sort of dealing with the ethereal. And then you have some of the more neurotypical of us dealing with physical government and things like that. And that there has to be a coming together of these two groups in order for us to finally make this leap and shift instead of, um, of the, the separateness that, that plays right. out. So, we got to get uncomfortable, right? Right. And take off all the labels too. Like, you know, oh, you're not like me. Okay. But also you mm -hmm. are. But how do we grow? You never grow by staying in your self-definition and your oh, comfort no. zone. You only grow by making yourself uncomfortable and extending out. And Absolutely. Exploring. Absolutely. Yeah. Lori made a lovely point. She said, we need divine feminine in the government. Look at the nations with the female leaders. My mom, yeah. the fabulous Ursie Potter, posted earlier today, the countries with the worst COVID-19 situation are all led by men, and the countries with the best, healthiest, we don't have COVID-19, or we barely do anymore, are all countries led by women. Right. And yes, it is time for the power of the divine feminine. Um, this is happening, the divine, and that does not mean that women are on top now. The divine feminine energy is about nurturing right. and supporting natural growth. Right. But, and so yeah. it's not to say, you know, there's still an opportunity for men and all of that. Like this is, this is the same thing that, that is being spoken about in Black Lives Matter and different, different groups and organizations. There is, there's not exclusion. You know, if somebody says we need more of the divine feminine, that includes men too. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Um, but we're so used to compartmentalization boxes, categories. I need to understand you because you're not like me, you know, and, and, and this is, this is dissolving, dissolving in the midst of, of all of the, um, all of the challenges. Yeah. So. Um, one thing that I was seeing last night is there is a uh, removal of implants and things and structures that um, we were previously given um, from a consciousness perspective. Mm -hmm. And um, with those removals, it's almost like um, our spirits and our bodies are in a bit of withdrawal. So for those of you that are experiencing like tension in your body or pain or um, breaking of things or um, extreme sadness and waves of emotion, it's learning to live without uh, the block, the, mm -hmm. the, 
it's learning to live without the epidural, the sedative that said like, oh, the planet's fine. We're doing fine. <laughs> and then, you know, the curtain comes back and it's like, oh my God, we're not doing fine. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So, cool. um, and there's more to come. A little overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> Withdrawal is overwhelming. Speak to any, <laughs> anybody who's on a diet, anybody who's an addict. Withdrawal is a painful process. And, and when you've been addicted to disillusionment, um, and uh pain and now you have to grow mm -hmm. and it's like how do i fill that space you fill it with love but maybe you don't know what that's like yeah well we've like hit our hour of time yes we did i know and there's still so much more so um just a quick wrap up you guys like get ready Make sure you are prepared and you're ready because really, really rough times are coming. There's no question. All roads lead to the next, you know, six months being difficult to say the least. So be ready for that. Be safe. Be safe. Know that whatever the CDC tells you is like when the FDA tells you what is okay for vitamins and you're like, ah, no, that's like below the minimum of what we need. The CDC they, you know, these people don't want to lose their jobs and anyone who speaks the truth loses their job in the government right now. Like I saw Renfield last night and he was on uh, CNN and they were asking him to be honest and he couldn't. He was trying his best to like speak around in order to like say what he had to say and avoid saying what he wasn't allowed to say, but still trying to give the accurate information. The guy was doing a tap dance that Fred Astaire would have been proud of because he's a good man. And he honestly wanted to share the truth, but he knew if he did, he'd be fired and some like Trump head would be in his place. So don't just go on by what the CDC says. Think about like how much protection they're doing in hospitals. That's how much you should do every time you go out. It's not just, oh, well, I'm healthy, so therefore I don't have to wear a mask. Wear the mask. It keeps you from getting sick. I'm telling you that. I worked in healthcare as a chef for 20 years. So I've seen, I've, I've seen, and a food scientist, you know. I've, so keep yourself safe. Keep yourself well. And keep working through love. Look at all the good that the Black Lives Matter movement. I'm telling you, this is like the baseline for our next stage of spiritual evolution. I'm telling you. You know, when, when Trump comes with all of his minions and gassing and bringing the helicopters so low that people were getting hurricane level winds and thought the helicopters were going to land on them while they surrounded by cops who had weapons and tear gas. That's how our alleged president responds to a peace march. They're trying to provoke riots. And what did they get in response? People singing, dancing, families having picnics on the Black Lives Matter Plaza. That's where we have our power. And this is why the more we support Black Lives Matter, which is important, it's educating us about what's happening in the world now like you said the disillusionment is going away we can't deny we can't deny what's happening we got to dive in and once you know something you got to do something about it you know once you realize holy shit people are being lynched because of the color of their skin and then the cops say it's a hanging mm -hmm. you know once you hear like what is happening and you're seeing the videos and you're seeing that everyone is stepping up you have no choice. You have to look into yourself and say, what kind of person am I? And if I'm not willing to step up, what kind of, what am I, what do I have to work on to become someone who steps up? Or next life, you're going to bring all that karma back. So, you know, step up. Yeah. And, and from the, from, like I said, from the healer's perspective, as you're going through this process of protecting yourself and what do I need when I go out don't shy away from the discomfort don't face it you know if if 
somebody says to you, you're a sheep for wearing a mask and you feel like, you know, hurt by that, dive into that. And if there's a part of you that wants to um, acquiesce only because they said that, that's something to look at too. That's definitely not something to shy away from, um, you know, because somebody else's beliefs as projected on you are, are none of your business, right. you know, and, and if they're going to place such a heavy judgment on you t- doing what makes you feel comfortable, is that somebody you want in your life? Is mm-hmm. that somebody you want as a part of your, your everyday of being? Um, because you will constantly be the trick pony, you know, mm-hmm. oh, well, now I don't agree with this. What are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to jump for you and clap my hands. And and no, that's, yeah. it's, it's not okay. You know, um, that's not a heart centered connection. That is very in the mind. Like I want to be perceived a certain way, but what happens when you take that and you move down into that heart space? Um, I know it sounds super cliche and woo-woo to be like, be in your heart. But, you know, that place is free of division. The heart has four chambers, but it's one solid muscle. Your brain is divided Mm -hmm. and will always be divided. So, um, you know, as we move forward in safety and evolution, work on yourself. It is a mistake to think that working on yourself isn't doing anything. Mm -hmm. In the morphogenic field of human consciousness, whenever one person has a traumatic moment, we all have that moment, or we're all triggered in that moment. And it's this ripple effect. But the moment that that person decides to heal, that goes up into the morphogenic field that we all share as a conscious human race, and it begins to dissipate. And hopefully across the globe, somebody else is also doing their healing and sending that healing signal up to dissipate more. And it's like clearing away of the cobwebs so that we move into the total healing space. All the fear and greed created what we got now. So if we bring love and kindness, think of what we could create. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And when you uh, are talking with someone and they make fun of you for wearing a sheep, I mean, a mask, calling you a sheep for wearing a mask. Remember, you don't know what their life karma is. You don't know what their life path is. You don't know what lessons they may have come to this earth to learn some hard lessons and then die of COVID-19. You know, that might be their karmic situation. Like, you don't know what their life was planned to be. So let them live their life. You know, let them do whatever it is. Or maybe they're meant to survive, but they have an amazing epiphany. Or maybe they're just meant to be a dirtbag for a whole life. I mean, back in my life, I had some lives where I was not a good person. It's all about balance. That was one thing and maybe a conversation for another time, but, but balance, balance is something that will always be. For one thing, there will always be another. I know we're moving into unity consciousness and fifth dimension and integration of the whole. I get it. But there will always be a need for balance as long as this physical earth structure exists. It happens in nature. When nature falls out of balance, what happens? Things start to die off. But in that, in the ashes of that death, the soil is, is mineralized and enriched and, and, you know, things come back stronger. And I'm not talking about people dying here. I'm not saying anybody Mm -hmm. um, should be excited for death, but I am talking about a return to overall balance. And that's why riots, that's why, um, you know, recognition of wrongdoing. And that's why these things are going to continue until we find balance. So it is the perfect farewell message. <laughs> Accidental for sure. <laughs> perfect. Well, thank you guys. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. This was fun. Yes. Have a wonderful, and listen, find your way to joy, find your way to joy please and have a wonderful day bye everybody bye